Hi, I'm Timothy Jones and I'm Professor of Music here in the College of Fine Arts and uh, it's my pleasure to talk a little bit about the course that we have developed collaboratively with hospitality with my colleague here. And my name is Murray McKenzie and I'm a professor at the Hospitality School, so at the college there and Tim and I got together and put this wonderful course together and we're going to explain a little bit about the course and how it's going to help you when you go out maybe to a different place, looking at different music and also consuming different wines. So, have you ever been to a restaurant where the music has been so loud you can hardly hear the conversation with your guest, your partner? Have you also been to a restaurant where it's so low that you can hardly hear it at all? So what we've done is really devise this course where we look at different styles of wine that then marry with different styles of music. So I'll let Tim talk about the music. So that exact issue of the music being too loud or too low and probably inappropriate for certain venues is one of the things that we're looking at. In Las Vegas, we have hundreds and hundreds of restaurants and event centers that host receptions, uh, they have restaurants, they have all kinds of events where music and wine play a leading role. And there's enough times that we go to these places and think this could be done in a better way. With the amount of students that are studying music and studying event management in particular in hospitality, we thought it would be a good idea to start pairing these elements and raising the bar here in Las Vegas as the entertainment capital of the world, we should be leading the field in some of these areas. So we've got certain wines that will pair with certain types of music. For example, we go to maybe a, a orchestral evening where it's, it's a very light and, and, and a sort of bubbly, you know, and so obviously we, we pair well with a a sparkling wine. But when it gets to maybe some of the percussion areas, which Tim is very, very professional at, it's very loud and noisy. And so maybe there's a different type of wine. But overall, we're looking at something that's going to pair all the way through. For example, if our, we've got loud rock and roll music, then we've got this big, bold character of wine that comes out, like a lovely Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley, for example. Or we've got this lovely mellow music, like we can have a Merlot that sort of it really floats in there nice and soft, you know, and it, and it really um, takes some time to, to develop those aromas and flavors in your mouth as well as listen to the music. Or we could have a very sweet, sweet music, and we've got a sweet wine to pair with that as well. So we've got lots of, lots of different styles of Rieslings and also dry whites that will go with different styles of music. Yeah, the idea is that we want to elevate the experience of both the music and the wine. If either one overpowers the other, it's going to cancel out or present a less than enjoyable experience. There are some things that we've discovered through a lot of the research that has been done up to this point, and that is that some of the big, heavy, low noises are going to bring out more of the dark and bitter flavors in wine. And so you have to be careful about how you do those pairings. Whereas some of the high pitched, very shrill sounds also might start to focus on the acidity and the brightness and the energy of the wine. So how do you look for those elements within the music and then partner that with a wine that it's going to complement very well? Mm. So on our first night of our class, we had an interesting uh, encounter. We put together uh, outside uh, a small gathering of our students and then we had three different wines um, that then we paired with three different styles of music. Yeah. And then they tasted, wrote some notes down and then we brought the students inside. And then for wine four, five and six, we paired also different music. And then we ask them for their comments. I like this because it was more uh, in tune with the music. I like this because it was more s sounding like it went with this style of music. And then we told them the type of wine that we had for each of those different events. And what sort of wine was it, Tim? So outside we did a sparkling, then a white, and then a red. And then we replicated that inside with another sparkling, another white, and another red. 
And when the students were making their notes, we made it clear to them they did not have to use any wine or music technical terms. They just put in lay terms what they were experiencing and what they were feeling. And then we asked them, which was your favorite sparkling and why? And which was your favorite music and why? And the same with the whites and the reds. And they kind of matched things up. And then we asked them for an overall favorite. And the interesting thing was when we asked them for their favorite of one of these wines, some of the students said, I would never buy this one that we had outside, this white, but the one that we had inside, that white, I would buy that and share that with my friends. Hmm. And so then we let them know. Yes, we did. And the wines that we had outside and inside, the white, the red, and the sparkling were exactly the same. There were no differences between them. But the music was different. So this was a great experiment for us. And I think it really set the tone for the rest of the class as well. Yeah, the students just about fell out of their chairs that some of these wines tasted so completely differently due to the music. And it had a little bit to do with the fact that when we were outside, the temperature was cooler and it was in the evening, so it was darker. And inside, it was brighter and it was warmer. That certainly played an effect. But the point was that the music affected emotion so much that the students really could see big differences in the wine. So that gave us the launching mm. pad to mm. then start to travel around the world with this class. It's a very international class. And we are currently in the middle of visiting 10 different international countries where we look at the music specifically from that country, the wines from that country, and then the cultural influences on those two things. We're focusing on four different styles of music throughout the course. We could use all kinds of things, but we're trying to give the students the, the same control group of genres every week. So we look at folk music from that country, jazz from that country, we look at classical music from that country, and also rock and roll or pop music from that country to mm. pair with the wines. Yeah, so in uh, each uh, class we have a white, a red, and a sparkling wine. So uh, uh, we always look at the grape varietals from that country. We learn a little bit about the history of those grape varietals. We look at the um, characteristics of aging in those grape varietals and making of the wines. And then we also look at some classification systems that they've got in there. So it's not um, a wine class and it's not a music class. It's a pairing of both of them. So uh, I'm sure that Tim could spend hours talking about music as I could talking about wine, but we try and make it an exciting class for the students. And, and we do have one uh, textbook that we use. It's a very, very basic textbook, the, the Wine Folly, and uh, it does explain the basic characteristics of the wine. So we're looking at acidity, we're looking at body, and that body of wine will then go with the style of music that we have. We're looking also a little bit about the alcohol content that we've got in here, and then obviously we're looking at some aromas and things, but we don't go into great detail with that. It's mainly looking at the basic characteristics that we've got. Last fall for the art walk that the College of Fine Arts hosts, we partnered to kind of test how this course might go and we, we brought in a red wine and a white wine and we paired it with music that was specifically arranged for the marimba band. And we felt like the whites mm. might go with the metallic type of instruments, the vibraphone, the glockenspiel, some of the percussive sounds, and the reds might pair more nicely with the wood tones and the warmth of the marimba. We had about 300 people come through. We did. We got rid of all of the wine. Absolutely. And <laughs> And the feedback was really good. We yes. had hospitality students wandering around asking people questions and they were really intrigued about how this all worked. How many, how many turns, Tim, to open a bottle of sparkling wine are there? I think for the cage it's going to be six. I think, now if you're ever at a bar and you want to put a bet on it, you can always guarantee there's going to be six. So I'm going to turn this one, two, three, four, five and six. Always six, yes. Perfect. And now we've got to open this. So in class, we open it um, a, a special way. I use a knife. Goodness me. So, oh. The class is FAB 335, and it's going to be running every semester. It's on a Monday evening, 
and we talk about some of their technicalities. We do some article and journal research, uh, talk about the book readings, get into some of the wine making and the elements of music that are culturally important. And then we start to get on with our tasting and pairing mm. music. And the students give us feedback as we go through a series of pieces of music with each wine that we're looking at. And then we'll culminate that mm. with a review at the end of the class. Well, I mean, with all that talking, we need to have a drink. So we're going to toast to this class. And because, I mean, the students do sample the wine. They're not going to walk out of the, the class uh, drunk or anything. You know, that, that means there's a, a certain uh, amount I pour into the glass. And then we go through the whole process of tasting. So here's to our aesthetics of music and wine. And uh, I, I'm sure it's going to be a successful class, Tim. Cheers. Congratulations. <laughs>